guys back at former pad here well spring has barely begun but i've already seen signs of pest damage i walked out here today just checking on my tomatoes and when i got to my sun sugar which is my favorite i noticed that the tops are cut off completely cut off you see like here it's cut off so guys that's a sign that i have um tomato hornworms and you know those are those fat ugly creatures that love to devour our tomatoes before we get a chance to eat them so um i started going through and searching the plant and i said you know let me stop and get my camera so you i can take you guys along today we're gonna see we're gonna do some tomato hornworm hunting and i'm gonna give you some tips on how to get ahead of tomato hornworm and other pest damage and also um we're gonna be trimming up my tomato plants because as you can see they're already loaded with tomatoes lots of them are ripe but i have a little leaf spot and other stuff going on so guys without further ado let's get started So guys, my number one tip to keep, not just to get rid of them once they're here, but to keep them away in the first place, is to sprinkle some diametaceous earth along the ground. Tomato hornworms, they, they crawl on the ground and get to the plant. And what diametaceous earth does, and you have to make sure it's food grade. It doesn't matter what brand it is, just make sure it says food grade. Okay, so this is food grade. Shows, shows that it's safe for all the pets shows that it's safe for the chickens I actually use this in the chicken coop and and in the chicken food because this is actually used in food products it's used in skin products it's 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 actually has a lot of health benefits however how diametaceous earth works is whether it's aphids or white flies or slugs or snails or tomato hornworms when it comes in contact with their skin it's um desiccates them or it sucks out the moisture out of their skin it dries them up they literally dry up till they die so what i'm gonna do now is and it's good for the plants it's also good for the plants so what i'm gonna do is generous, generously shake this around all my tomato plants and i'm gonna do the same for my cucumbers that i planted the other day um, just to make sure that if the caterpillars come in contact with the plant or the hornworms come in contact with the with the diametaceous earth it will kill them it's not an instant death but they'll slowly dry up and die um i was looking trying to find the cat the hornworm that did this damage i couldn't find it I, and i suspect my ladies my chick my hands probably got to it yesterday because the hens weren't here yesterday so maybe i just i didn't examine the plants yesterday so this damage might have been from the day before and the tomatoes um, and the chickens got to, got to the hornworm already. All right, so that's how we're taking care of the hornworms. Um, after, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna trim. So before I put the camera down, um, one of the things that I spoke about last year on my channel when I, when I was growing tomatoes is for tomatoes, it's very important to have um, airflow so that that you know it can get good fruit and um you know less disease because when it's when a tomato doesn't have good airflow it can cause a lot of mold and fungus and things to build up on the plant this plant actually had a ton of leaf spot up to a couple of months ago not a couple of months but probably a few weeks ago i haven't had it for a couple of months and um you can still see some slight signs of it it's way, way better. Um, I, I sprayed it, I've been spraying it with a little um, hydrogen peroxide in water, um, like a tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle, shake it up, because hydrogen peroxide is another organic method of um, treating your plants. So as you can see, but you have to be very careful. Don't use it too strong because you can also damage your plants. 
So as you can see, this is my Everglades tomato and it is literally loaded, loaded, loaded. Every branch is loaded with tomatoes, green ones, ripe ones. Um, so this is really great. So I know it kind of hurts to trim it up when it's at this point, but at the least, what you want to do, if there are any damaged leaves like this, any damaged leaf, disease leaves, I'm going to trim it off. Oops. Any damaged leaves, you're going to trim off. Any diseased leaves. See, like this one has a little disease. So that's a good way to bring airflow without, you know, taking off too much. This one has a little tomato, but this branch doesn't look very healthy. So I'm taking that off. The tomato won't go to waste. I'll eat the tomato. The tomato is still fine. All right, I'm going to put the camera down. And so you can watch me, then I'll show you what it looks like after. All right, so all these little branches that are hanging in a downward, hanging downward, that kind of don't have any tomatoes and they're kind of hanging like this. I'm just going to take these off. I'm just trying to open up the tree a little bit, the bush. Um, this is actually just loaded with tomatoes right now. And Everglades tomatoes are like that. They're the easiest tomato to grow in Florida. It's called Everglades tomato because, of course, you know the Everglades is in Florida. And it's, it's native to Florida. So anything that's native to the area that you live in, of course, is going to be easy to grow. Everglades tomatoes actually usually grow um, from bird, like bird, bird droppings. A lot of times they'll pop up in your garden from bird droppings. Birds love them. They're so tiny um, and juicy and sweet that birds eat them and poop out the seeds in your garden and then you get tomatoes. Um, these, these tomatoes here are actually... Um, these are actually volunteers that I found in one of my pots and I transplanted them here along with some sun gold tomatoes, which I just bought. But this one was a volunteer, but I believe it's a volunteer from a plant that I had last year that never, it didn't spring up last year, but this year it sure did. Let me get in a little closer. And Everglades tomato is also very bushy. So it's, I'm, I am trying to open it up. I am giving it some airflow, but it's almost hard because it just has so many leaves, so many branches that I, I almost feel like I'm hurting the plant by taking up so much. But, you know, I'll still have a ton of tomatoes. So I'm taking a lot of the branches that are pointing in a down, downward position and I find a lot of those don't have any tomatoes so I'm taking a lot of those. And anything that looks diseased I'm taking it off because you don't want the last thing you want is the disease to spread to the areas that are nice and healthy. And I'm really glad I didn't remove this one. This one had a lot of disease to begin with. Another thing you want to do with your tomatoes is you want to remove the lowest branches to the ground. And let's see. It, and that's another tough thing. What you can do, because my lower branches are also loaded, but what you can do is transplant the lower branches into pots or transplant them to other areas of your garden. Um, one thing about tomato that is wonderful, you can just take a cutting off a tomato plant, off a tomato and stick it in the ground and it grows. So if I take the lower um, branches, I will just stick them in the ground and let them grow. But I have to figure out where I'm gonna stick them first. 
So I could put them in a pot or what I probably do is just let them stay for now until I decide where I'm going to put it. Um, what I did was I did mulch the ground and that really helps with backsplash. The reason that you, you always want to um, trim the lowest limbs on the tomato, the ones closest to the ground, is because when you water, a lot of times there's backsplash that, that splashes up on the plant and then that's why a lot of times the lower leaves are very diseased and the disease can spread up the tree. But as you can see, my lowest leaves are pretty healthy because I have mulch. Mulch really does protect the plant from backsplash and protects the ground. So here's what I have so far. I'm not gonna do any more today because I don't wanna put the plant in the shock. Um, uh, that, you see, you can see on the ground what I've just trimmed off. So I trimmed off all the visible, any leaves that were um, damaged, any leaves that were turned down, any leaves that look diseased, I've already trimmed it. Um, it definitely could open up some more but for now, I, I, I just want to take it in stages. For now, the plant is looking extremely healthy. Um, it's not in any way affected. It is, this plant is like loaded, loaded, loaded. So I didn't see any tomato hornworms while I was um, trimming. So I, I really suspect that the, the chickens got to it. Um, there's this other plant right beside it that looks pretty diseased. I made us remove this whole plant. Let's see. Let's see. I made us remove this whole plant because I have my sun gold, which is my favorite. My sun gold, two sun golds right here. And another, <laughs> another um, volunteer popped up there. I see some more tomato volunteers in the back. So this one has been really struggling. I'm not sure what tomato it is yet. Or maybe I'll just wait until I get the tomatoes to see what it is. Um, let's see. Let's see what is, oh, okay. So this one isn't, isn't bearing yet. It isn't fruiting yet. Um, hmm. Let's see. Okay, this one isn't fruiting at all. I'm going to remove this. Sometimes you sacrifice for the better of the other plants. This one isn't fruiting and it's really been struggling with disease. So I'm removing that one altogether. That way, the Everglades tomato, which as you can see, it's spreading all over the place. This will have some place to spread. Then as my sun golds come up, they'll also have their own space. The last thing you want to do is overcrowd it to get them diseased. All right. So that's what it looks like now, guys. Um, another thing, oops. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna I discovered this beautiful beautiful scotch bonnet tree and it's scotch bonnet pepper tree and it's actually blossoming and this looks so healthy I'm gonna transplant this just wanted to show you real quick and um, hope you enjoyed that video and we will see each other on next video so guys go out today plant a seed Let's start growing our own food, guys. Let's eat our own healthy food. Food that we know where it's coming from, guys. Let's plant a seed today. Bye now.